Welcome back to Space Haven. So, sadly, this will be the last episode in this playthrough, as I have come to the conclusion that I have done several rather substantial and bad mistakes. But this video will be a um, tip video for what mistakes did I do, what have I learned, and uh, what will I do differently in the next playthrough. So first of all, and this is probably very obvious, having a balanced crew. That's very important. Uh, when you make your crew, make sure that you have uh, a nice balance in their uh, stats. And also make sure that you have someone who is good at piloting, someone that is good at botany, someone that is good at industry, Sorry about that, my phone just rang. Someone who is good at gunnery, someone that is good at shielding, and someone that is good at weapons. And, well, you basically want all of them, but some of them are more useful than others, and some of them are more less uh, important than others. I like having construct on as many of them as possible, but I would forgo having construct on a few if that meant having higher in the other areas. Also, take a look at the attributes uh, of your characters, but don't spend an hour making a crew. You, you can find um, crew from becoming a pirate, uh, kidnapping people and so forth, and putting them in prisons. So, yeah. Moving on to the next one, size matters. This is the biggest mistake, quite literally, that I've made in this playthrough. This ship is way too big. I have way too many areas that are being unused. Um, I have built two space corridors, whereas I would actually uh, build one space corridors now that I have learned uh, more about the game. Why? Well, if you look at this, I have been jumping around like a madman trying to get enough Energium so that I could build energy rods. Why am I using so much energy? Well, I have lights everywhere. I have uh, lots of wall thermal regulators everywhere. I have these hypersleep chambers. I have industry that keep using it. So, build efficiently. Build smart. Don't overdo things like I've done here. Um, this might be viable later on. But I think perhaps the game needs a little bit better balance on the um, uh, energy and water too. Uh, because you don't really get that much energium and ice in space. But... That's a very important thing to keep in mind. Build efficiently, build smart, build uh, what you need and know more than what you need until you get to a certain point of the game. Um, then, of course, we have the energy turrets. This has been a kind of a, a question that I've seen multiple times. The way you use the turrets is that you need to have someone manning the um, uh, weapons console. There we are. It needs to be set to a readiness level of either yellow or prefer preferably red uh, because you want them to... You don't want them to go away while you're in the middle of combat. And then you just pick uh, the turrets in question. Uh, you can hold down the shift key to select all of them if you want. And you target somewhere in space. And now you can see there's a target here. When you're done, you click remove target and you're done. And you probably want to see the inside of your ship again, so you remove the roof view. Um, then we move on to... I'm sorry about all the umming here. Then we move on to salvaging. I've also found that salvage is not really worth it. If you look at what I have on my ship, I have... 
63 infra scrap that I'm not using. That's taking up space. 63 space is being taken up in my uh, storage uh, base. And basically the only two salvages that I've found that I would say is worth it is tech scrap and energy scrap. And even those are only necessary to a certain extent, but the the only times I would say that you need hull scrap or infra scrap is if you're in dire need of uh, hull blocks or infra blocks. Soft scrap, I don't think I've ever used it. The only time I've actually recycled soft scrap was because I wanted to get rid of it. But you can see how many soft blocks I have. It's not a problem. And yeah, you get more infra blocks from just plain out mining and manufacturing them in the um, assembler. Yes, you do need electronics components, but it's not like you are not going to find um, the base metals, the noble metals and the carbon that you need. But be careful about the carbon because the carbon is also needed for... Um, or uh, your um, plant room. Which leads me to the next uh, step here. When you have a, a room that is dedicated to growing your, uh, your food, uh, do make uh, a CO2 producer if you have enough carbon. If you don't have enough carbon, remember to stop this thing if you need the carbon for steel and open the vents. But if you have enough carbon, have this going and close the vents to this room. The plants will produce uh, oxygen for the room. As you can see, the room has plenty of oxygen. Uh, it's a little bit less than the rest of the ship, but it's still enough that nobody's going to have any kind of problem in here. Uh, it's fine. Moving on. In this room, I had huge issues understanding how to get rid of toxic gases you simply built gas scrubbers and one of them seemed to be enough for this entire room even when i'm using several machines so just keep that in mind and while we're on the industry room having these uh, power capacity nodes nearby your machines is definitely a good idea so uh, I would recommend you try to build at least the, the larger machines uh, with these power capacity nodes uh, beside them. But again, keep in mind the build efficiently, do not overdo it, do not build as many lamps as I have, and uh, just make sure that your crew uh, does survive, because that's the point of the game, isn't it? Next. Build your industry close to your storages. Don't have your crew spend um, one third of their work day carrying stuff from the storage areas to the industry areas and back. I don't know how many... I, this is day 256. I've probably wasted 50 days of that playtime just by people walking back and forth with things from storage to industry. If I were to rebuild this ship now, I would have built the industry ship beside the cargo bay so that, and I would also have a smaller cargo bay, but yes, uh, this is the cargo and, and ship bay, blah, blah, uh, cargo and hangar bay. So I would have the growth room at one side and I would have the industry room at the other side. Probably doesn't make for as elegant looking a ship, if you can call this blob elegant. It used to be more sleek, but it's not that sleek anymore. But... As you can see from these various bizarre vessels, it doesn't matter how your ship looks. Uh, the point is if whether it will keep your people alive, which is a tip all by itself. Um, if you decide to take prisoners on board, make sure that you have all the facilities needed for any human being available to those prisoners. They need beds, they need comfort, they need a kitchen, uh, they need toilets, they need a medical bed, they need oxygen, and they need light, as in they need the comfort. So, before you take on prisoners, make sure that you have the production you need of water and food. 
and that you have everything built up in a prisoner area before you take on those prisoners. Otherwise, they'll die, and then you've just wasted resources. When it comes to weapons and fighting, um, shotguns are definitely the best uh, weapon for fighting monsters. Um, I'm not sure if they are the best ones for fighting other humans. Um, the tips that I've read uh, indicate that assault rifles are actually better when you're fighting humans uh, than using the uh, shotguns. But the shotguns are, without a doubt, really, really good. Speaking of which, when you explore derelicts and vessels that have been left behind, don't dock at the air. Don't dock at the airlock if it's possible to dock at one of these open sites because the uh, early game monsters, the the biters, they will not attack you. You can just stand or float in space, and they will just stand there looking at you while you kill them to bits. So that's a, a useful way of dealing with them. Money. Money is only a valuable asset in terms of how much your ship and crew can survive based on how you spend the money. So hoarding 23,510 credits, um, not useful in terms of the fact that I could have bought multiple times both Energium and Hyperium from multiple trading vessels that I've encountered during my travels. Hyperfuel probably is a little bit too expensive to buy all by itself, so I don't think I would recommend buying that from someone. But with the exception of hyperfuel and possibly artificial meat, I think that you should try to spend your money. But when you have blocks in excess, don't be afraid to sell them so that you get some money. It, I mean, if it if you get money as a byproduct of selling stuff smartly and buying stuff smartly, then by all means, you should, of course, do that. But I have been a bit too um, restrictive with my uh, spending. Then we have the, uh, the shuttles. I would say that having two shuttle hangers is definitely useful. Having more than two pod hangers is not so useful. You, I'd, I'd say that you do. I had four of them. You don't need it. You might need or it might be useful to have three depending on the size of your crew the size of your ship and so forth but i probably would say that you are going to be fine with two of them storage areas can also be uh, set up with priorities this is useful of course for having uh, dedicated storage areas or storage doesn't say that it's a storage area but let's just call it a storage storage area so you could have a dedicated storage for food for instance near the kitchen and keep in mind you can build small ones as well so i could have built in uh, storage i could have built a small storage in here and could have kept all the food in here so build the storages also smartly on board your ship. Now, I don't remember how much this thing can store. Um, we can build that very quickly. The ship is going to die soon, but uh, that's just how it's going to be. Assign that to Wally. Just let it get it up. Okay. So a small storage has room for 50. So this would be plenty storage for the kitchen in itself. So if I just then set up the rules, select all, uh, no more rule, and I would then demand or bring here fruit, vegetables, meat, this and this. And if you are daring enough to eat uh, monster meat or uh, you are desperate enough to eat human meat, then by all means put them in there as well. So build storages smartly around your vessel. That is a definitely uh, something to, to take into consideration. I did notice that I didn't have these uh, hypersleep chambers during my first jumps. Uh, there is a risk of your crew getting nauseous from that, but there is no danger of, of them dying, apparently. Um, 
the first two jumps that I made from system one to system two and system two to system three were without hyper jumps and it had no adverse effect at all on my crew. But maybe I just got very lucky. And finally, um, just keep in mind that your crew being at a certain level of discomfort is probably better than your crew being left in the situation that we are leaving these guys in. Because these guys aren't getting anywhere. These guys are being left behind and instead of just watching the ship turn black and them dying, I'm just ending the play through here. I do intend to make another series on this game and I will actually make that right away because I'm having so much fun with the game. But I'll try starting the... Uh, differently. I'll try starting with a, um, a spaceport. Um, I'm not promising that this is what's going to happen in the series, but I, I'm going to try to start with a spaceport and see if I can build my own ship via the spaceport. Um, because that's what that start says. It says you start on a spaceport, you build your own ship, and then you go off from there. So I'll try that start. If not, I'll just do a regular ship start. And I will start recording again uh, when we are... Maybe not all the way up here, but when we are somewhere around here, I will start recording it. I don't want to wait too long. I don't know if we will get to the middle. It takes a long time. Um, so, but I'm having a great deal of fun with the game. Uh, also, I should mention there are some mods. Um, I am contemplating using them. Uh, the mods affect water and energy rods. But I'm worried that it will make the game too easy. Uh, because this is the dev's job, balancing this out. And this game is not a game that I want to be too easy. I mean, it might sound weird, but I'm actually kind of uh, happy that I have failed. Which is quite rare for me to say. Because I have learned so much from this playthrough. And that is very valuable when you're having this much fun with the game. So I don't... I, I probably won't use those mods. I think they make the game a little bit too easy as is uh, currently. Uh, but if I make another playthrough and it fails and there is still demand for... Uh, or interest for, for uh, watching me play the game, then I might make a playthrough using the mods. But that's it for now. Uh, say goodbye to Catherine, Miz, Peps, Quad and Wally. I might use other names in the next uh, playthrough. I don't know. I haven't decided. It feels a bit sad to leave these guys behind. And uh, yeah. But for now, thank you so much for joining me and uh, I hope you've enjoyed the series and I hope that you will follow the next series that I'm making on the game as well. So, take care everyone. <laughs>